let A be an n by n matrix over the complex numbers. We'll suppose that A is positive semi-definite. So that means if I take any V and Cn, we take A times V, inner product with V, then that's always a real number, and it's greater than or equal to zero. Here, the inner product is a standard Hermitian inner product for Cn. Our problem, we want to show there exists a unique positive semi-definite square root s for a. By square root, we just mean s squared is equal to a. Now, the key result to show our problem is going to be the spectral theorem for Cn. So this states, if a is self-adjoint, so if a is equal to a star, where star is conjugate transpose, then we have the eigenvalues for a are real, and there exists an orthonormal basis for Cn consisting of eigenvectors for A. Another way to state this, there exists a unitary matrix P such that P inverse AP is equal to D, where D is a diagonal matrix with real entries. So this is just saying we could change basis to get A to look like a diagonal matrix with real entries, and the matrix that I use is unitary. Now, note unitary just means that P times P star is equal to P star times P is equal to the identity, or P star is equal to the inverse of P. There are three things we want to do. First, we want to show our result. Then, take a look at an explicit example. Finally, we'll explain why the spectral theorem is true. Now, to show our result, our first step is to show that A is self-adjoint. So A is equal to A star. Now, the only piece of data we have to go on, if we take A times V, inner product with V, that's real. So let's do some manipulations. I could push A into the second slot as A star. Then we could switch the order by introducing a complex conjugate. Since we know that this is real, I could take the complex conjugate away, which leaves us with A star V, inner product with V. We'll push this term to the other side, which will give us the equation A minus A star times V, inner product with V is equal to zero for all V and Cn. So let's call A minus A star T, and we'll show that T is equal to zero. Now. First thing to note, t is skew Hermitian. So that means if we take t star, we get minus t back. So if we just follow our nose, t star is equal to a star minus a double star. a double star is just equal to a. So all we're doing is multiplying by a minus one to get minus t. So we have skew Hermitian. Now, if I have a skew Hermitian matrix and I want to make it Hermitian, I just multiply by i. So, it, okay, we take complex conjugate. What do we do? We're going to take t star, and then we take the conjugate of i, which becomes minus i. But t star is equal to minus t, so the minus signs go away. And I have that it star is equal to it. So, it is Hermitian, okay, or self adjoint. Now, we can invoke the spectral theorem on it. So what this will say, it can be put in diagonal form. OK, let's see what we can do with that then. Well, let's suppose we have an eigenvector for it with eigenvalue lambda. Now, if we take it times v, inner product with v, I could pull the i out in front. Then we have tv, inner product with v, which were assuming is zero by this equation here. On the other hand, since I have an eigenvector, which is non-zero, it times v is going to be equal to lambda v. I could pull out the lambda. Then we're left with lambda times the inner product of v with itself. And since v is not equal to zero, this is going to be a positive number here. 
that's going to force lambda to be equal to 0. Now, since our choice of eigenvector is arbitrary and the eigenvalue, that means all the eigenvalues for it are going to be equal to 0. So our diagonal matrix is a 0 matrix, which means t itself has to be equal to 0. So that means a is equal to a star. For our next step, we diagonalize A. Since A is equal to A star, we can invoke the spectral theorem. So we'll have a unitary matrix P, such that P inverse AP is equal to D, a diagonal matrix with real eigenvalues. Now, those real eigenvalues are going to be greater than or equal to zero by our positive semi-definite condition. So if we take eigenvector v for eigenvalue lambda, we'll say v is non-zero. We take the inner product of a v with v, it's the inner product of lambda v with v, we pull out the lambda, and then the inner product of v and v is real and positive. Since the inner product of a v and v is assumed to be real and greater than or equal to zero, lambda has to be real and greater than or equal to zero also. So, all of our eigenvalues are real, greater than or equal to zero. Now, I can write A as P D P inverse. Okay, we'll need later, that's the same as P D P star, where D is our diagonal matrix. We'll say lambda one through lambda n down the diagonal. Each lambda i is greater than or equal to zero. The square root that we'll want it's going to be defined as s equal to p d the one half p inverse, which will be the same as p d the one half p star, where d the one half is just taking our same diagonal matrix, but using the square root of each entry on the diagonal. So we need to show three things here. First, that s squared is equal to a. Then, that s is positive semi-definite. Finally, s is unique. To see that s squared is equal to a, we just crunch it out. So if I multiply p d the one half p inverse times itself, okay, the p's on the inside collapse, the d the one half times itself gives us d, I'm left with p d p inverse, which is our a. Next, we want to show that s is positive semi-definite. So, if we take the inner product of s times w against w, we want to show that that's always greater than or equal to zero. Now, if we write s as p times d of the one half p star as before, we could push the p of the other side as a p star. Then I want to let v be equal to p star w. Since p is invertible, it's an isomorphism. So if we show that d the one half v against v in the inner product, it's greater than or equal to zero for all v, we'll have our result. Now, to see that, let's let v be equal to this tuple here. So I have z1 through zn. If we multiply by d to the one half, we're just going to multiply each zi by the square root of lambda i. And then if we take the inner product, all we're going to get is the sum over all square root of lambda i times the modulus square root of zi. And that's always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's our result. So we have positive semi-definite. Finally, we show that s is unique. So we'll assume that we have another positive semi-definite square root, s prime. We'll start by assuming that s and s prime commute, and then show that afterwards. So if s and s prime commute, they're both diagonalizable, so they're simultaneously diagonalizable. That means there exists an invertible q, such that qs q inverse equals d1, a diagonal matrix. q s prime q inverse equals d2, another diagonal matrix. Because s squared equals a, s prime squared equals a, okay, I'm going to square both sides of each of these equations we'll have that d1 squared equals d2 squared. Now, because d1 and d2 have diagonal entries all greater than or equal to zero, 
we'll have to have that D1 is equal to D2. If we push the Q and Q inverse to the other side on each of these, we'll have that S is equal to S prime, and that shows our uniqueness. Now, we have to show that S and S prime commute. So to do that, we'll go back to the way that we defined our S. Now, if you take a look at that, the way we defined S was by an equivalence. So the idea was, if V is an eigenvector for A of eigenvalue lambda, then that meant that V was also an eigenvalue for S of eigenvalue square root of lambda, and vice versa. Now, S prime and A commute. Okay, A is just S prime squared. So if I take A times S prime V, that's just gonna be lambda times S prime V. Okay, we push the A to the inside, becomes lambda V, and then we pull the lambda back out. Now, by our equivalence, that means that S times S prime V is gonna be equal to square root of lambda times S prime V. I push the square root of lambda to the inside. Then we note that square root of lambda times V is just S times V. So we see that S and S prime are gonna commute when we multiply against this one vector. Now, this is gonna hold on any eigenvector that we use, and because we have a basis of eigenvectors, it's gonna hold on the entire space. So we have the S and S prime commute.